After you left, we reached out to both the Alchemist's Guild and Stillglade Fane and attempted all manner of treatments. But the results were always the same. Whatever the answer is, it's not alchemy or conjury. Why did it have to be Yishtola and Urianger and not me? Out of all of us, they are the ones who could feasibly have solved this puzzle. And Elfano's still missing. God, it's all going wrong. Where do we even... A grave situation indeed. Might I be of some assistance? Kryle! I thought you busy delving into the mysteries of Eureka. When word reached me of the plight of our friends, I could not well stay away. As a fellow scion, not to mention your erstwhile mentor, this is one of those times you should feel free to call on me, regardless of my personal circumstances. I... yes, I should have thought of that. Thank you for coming, Kryl. We would welcome your insight. And I should be happy to provide it. Now, what's this I hear about Alphano heading into Imperial territory? That boy always did have some funny ideas. Do you remember the speech he gave when he was accepted to the studium? My life's goal is not less than the salvation of this star. <laughs> well, that particular grand pronouncement has been a source of great embarrassment to him, as you know. But... The fact of the matter is, he meant every word and has lived his life accordingly. Yes, he remains altruistic to a fault, but I'm worried he was too fixated on his goals to see the dangers, as has happened before. You needn't be so concerned. Though his values remain the same, Alphano is not the blinkered boy he once was. Slowly but surely his eyes have been opened, thanks to a certain someone. A certain someone whom he'd be mortified to learn had heard about his little speech. Mum's the word, eh? Right, I'd better have a look at our patients. They're in the infirmary, I assume. I'll need absolute quiet, so it would be best if I did this alone. All three are in fine physical health. At a glance, I would say they were merely sound asleep. Except for the fact that I couldn't sense the slightest trace of them in their bodies. It's as if their souls have taken leave of their phys- Ah, yes. The Elder Seed Seer made a similar observation. I've read the report. 
When you heard this mysterious voice, you described feeling as if you were somewhere else, yes? If we assume the ether which comprises your essence is being drawn to some other place, then it may be possible to follow the trail it leaves behind, just as we did in our search for Thancred. I wasn't around for that, but I can't imagine it was easy. Oh, it wasn't. But that's no reason not to try. I will have need of Master Matoya's crystal eye if I'm even to make the attempt. So, I suggest we pay her a visit.
come to disturb my peace again, have you? I hide myself away in a cave, and still you people insist on pestering me with your problems. Oh, I mistook you for young What's-His-Name, but I see now you're the sister. Weren't you supposed to be the lively one? I've seen happier faces at a rain-sodden burial. Well, I'm sorry to dash your expectations, but the situation isn't exactly conducive to gaiety. Ha! That's more like it. Stoller used to spit and hiss like a wildcat, too. Better for a young thing like you to be filled with fire and leave the doom and gloom to your elders. Now, what exactly does this tragic situation of yours have to do with me? If I may, Master Matoya, we have need of your crystal eye once more. And Stola is one of the afflicted, is she? Very well. She may be an ungrateful stray, but she's my ungrateful stray, and I'll not see her buried before I am. Right. Let us see what we can see. I'll begin from where our friends first fell, and cast my senses out from there. What is it? Did you find them? But, but, this, this, this doesn't make sense. But, but how is it even possible? How is what possible? Kryle, what did you see? The, th the threads, they just... they just ended. And, and no, I didn't lose track of them. I followed them as far as they went. It's as if... It's as if they were cut off. Could the ether have dissipated if it had? Oh, oh, God! Their bodies are just husks. It's like the broodmother's daughter all over again. No, no, th this is different. The Kalyana girl was already dead, body and soul, when Lakshmi affected her resurrection. Aye, let's not jump to conclusions. If their physical forms yet breathe, and show no signs of wasting, then it follows that their souls must still be intact somewhere. But where? That's the question, isn't it, girl? Death has not taken them to the ethereal sea, yet there are no tracks left for us to follow. We're no closer to an answer than when we started. But knowing their souls are still out there is progress of a sort. We just have to keep looking. Pray, excuse me a moment. Yes? I remember, but... What, to Alamigo? We're on our way. That was Lee's. Apparently, a group of Populares have defected to Alamigo, and Maxima, the envoy Alphano left with, is one of them. 
I'm sorry. I realize we've barely begun here, but... Go, child, go! You've made up your mind, and life's too short for dithering. I'll do some digging in the meantime, and see if there isn't some other method we could use to continue the search. Let's be off, then. Oh, not again. The enchantment barely seems to take these days. I chalk it up to old age, but I rather doubt it's that simple. Before they took ill, Yishtola and Urianger were sharing notes on a thinning of the ether. It seems to be happening all over. Does it now? And here I was, all set to blame my woes on that creaking mountain of refuse, clogging up. I fear something has gone awry. Still, there's naught to be gained from starting in shadows. You can only do what can be done, and that but one thing at a time.
I'm sorry to drag you halfway across the realm, but when Maxima mentioned Alphino, I thought you'd want to hear the news in person. Ah, we meet again. Though I was hoping our reunion would be under more auspicious circumstances. What happened to my brother? Where is Alphino? Never fear, my lady. Your brother was in fine health when I took my leave of him, and I have no reason to assume that has changed. You assume? If you will allow me, I shall endeavor to explain events. Our troubles began not long after we departed Doma. While crossing the burn, we were fired upon by the Emperor's personal guard and forced to make an emergency landing. As we stumbled from the wreckage, our attackers fell upon us again, and we would have perished there and then were it not for the intercession of a third party, a band of mercenaries whose leader claimed to pursue a vendetta against the Assians. This Shadow Hunter, as he styled himself, then escorted us out of the wastes to relative safety. Upon arriving back in civilization, I gathered my Popularis colleagues and prepared to flee the Empire. Master Alphino, however, declined the invitation to join us preferring to continue his investigation into the Assian threat. Well, at least he's not lying in a heap in the burn. Tell us more about these Assian hunters. Who are they? And is Alphano still with them? He is. As to who they are, I'm afraid I have nothing to tell you. Beyond the fact that they root out and destroy Assians, they were unwilling to divulge anything which might serve to identify them. They would not even reveal their next destination. But Master Alphino asked to accompany them all the same. Since parting company with your brother, we've been engaged in a game of cat and mouse with the Emperor's guard. We made our way through province after province, finding the army busy restoring order wherever we went, until we finally arrived here in Alamigo. I cannot thank Commander Aldin enough for giving us such an unexpectedly warm welcome. I'm not inclined to turn away refugees, no matter which land they call home. And if they can tell me how things lie in Garlemald, all the better. On that subject, there is much I would tell you. During the course of our journey, we heard tales that an entire rebel army had been slaughtered in the space of a single night. It would seem my former comrades grew tired of putting down uprisings in the conventional manner, and chose instead to bring a formidable new weapon to bear. Details were sparse, but the rumor alone was enough to dampen the flames of rebellion. I have also heard reports that several companies have withdrawn from their designated provinces and begun marching westward. It is my assessment that the Empire's forces are mobilizing for a large-scale military engagement. Westwood? You mean they're getting ready to invade Alamigo?
We knew this was coming, but not that it would be so soon. We've barely even begun to shore up our defenses. They won't stop an invading army. No, they won't. Dispatch messengers to the Alliance leadership requesting reinforcements, and send word to our officers in the field to hasten completion of those border fortifications. Prepare to meet the Imperials, head on! No matter how quickly we act, we still want for time. When the enemy comes into view, our best recourse will be to open negotiations with their commander, and see that the ensuing proceedings take as long as possible. Would you and Alize head to Doma and let Lord Hien know about this? I'm sure he'll want to hear about Alfino too. Consider it done. We'll send word when... Well, at least we're both still standing. Oh, thank the gods. I thought we'd lost you for a moment there. Why does this keep happening? I wish I knew. Nothing we've tried has brought us any closer to an answer. We'll keep working on it. But first, we need to go and see Lord Hien.
It seems the engineers have matters well in hand. Should the barrier work as we intend, Doma will be free to reinforce her allies in Alamigo without fear of weakening her own borders. Honored friends, the time has come to put your hard work to the test. Start the generator. Node 1 is operational. Nodes 2 to 8 are reporting similar energy levels. The barrier is forming. One thousand yams, two thousand, three thousand. Expansion remains smooth, no flux. Four thousand, five thousand. Target altitude reached. The barrier is holding steady at five thousand yams. We've done it. Imperial airship? Of all the rotten timing. But this is a gift, Mistress Alize. They can test our new wool for us. Seems solid enough. Though I was hoping for a fireball. Alpha, no. What are you? Let me go! He has my brother! Lower the barrier! Be at ease, girl. The lad is not dead, merely locked in slumber. No, not him too. We could identify no cause and found no remedy. Thus I sought to return him to Doma, and into the arms of Lord Heen himself, it would seem. It is a day for fated reunions. Would you not agree, adventurer? Or should I address you as the Warrior of Light? Gaius van Baelsar, the Black Wolf. That was the title I was given, one I have long since relinquished. Stand down. The Legatus of the 14th Imperial Legion died in Castrum Meridianum. I am no more than Gaius Baelsar, a man without rank or allegiance. 
Impossible. There's no way you could have survived. Do you remember how it unfolded? How I was deceived by La Habrea? How I was convinced that reviving the Ultima Weapon would allow me to bring peace to Eorzea? The Essian used me, as he used so many others, all to further the restoration of his wretched god. Yet even with the might of Alec at my command, you bested me. And as the Praetorium went up in flames, I was content to burn along with it, for a moment at least. A moment of folly. To surrender my life thus would have been to betray all who died for my cause. It was for them that I dragged myself free of the rubble and swore vengeance on the Assians. The Black Wolf has shed his pelt. Never to return to Garlemald or her legions. I live now only to exact revenge. My principal quarry was to be La Habrea, whom I gather you have since ushered unto oblivion. But so many more remain, long as their kind lurked in the shadows, laboring to sow chaos throughout our world. I would see each and every one dragged into the light and put to the sword. Are the Scions not of like mind? In this single respect, perhaps. Then I shall continue the partnership the boy began, and share what intelligence I have acquired. Among the Asians, the black-masked ilk are subordinate to those who wear red. This you already know. Yet among the Red there exists a hierarchy. Those set adrift with the Shards clearly stand below those still joined to the Source. Nabriales, who once dared to intrude upon the Rising Stones, belonged to the former group. And while he was indeed a dangerous foe, his powers were inconsequential next to the Paragons of the Source. The first was La Habrea, who plagues us no more. There is also the white-robed Elidibus, and the elusive Emmet Selk, about whom little is known. We have files on La Habrea and Elidibus, but I believe this Emmet Selk is new to us? As I assume my brother told you, we have evidence to suggest that an Asian now walks in the body of the Crown Prince. Have you identified this interloper? Elidibus seems the most likely culprit. As emissary, it is his role to maintain the equilibrium between darkness and light. Your many deeds in Heidelin's name have upset the balance. 
and I believe he seeks to restore it by throwing his considerable power behind the Empire. As a leader of the Asians, he is one of our primary targets. It was on the trail of this very prey that the boy and I came across the scene of a failed uprising. In the absence of a single Galian casualty, we inspected the bodies of the rebels, and the lack of any external injury drew my immediate attention. They had been slain by Black Rose, an alchemical invention of the Imperial Army. When I yet served as Legatus, I ordered its production halted, and all stockpiles destroyed. Toxic gas is not a tool of conquest, but of extermination. Toxic gas? This must be the new weapon Maxima warned us about. Something deadly enough to sweep away all resistance in a matter of hours. Gods. You don't think they're planning to use this in Alamigo, do you? Put your fears to rest. We infiltrated the production facility, and destroyed all existing stores of the chemical along with the plant itself. Even should they rebuild the operation, they will not soon manufacture another batch. Regardless, I would draw your attention to a directive we discovered in the plant's records. The document was marked with a recent date, and authorized with the signature of one Zeno C. A. Galvis. A dead man signing the death warrant for thousands. Tis bad comedy. But the tale does not end there. Within that same facility was a chamber filled with devices of elegant design. Cloning technology, we realized. And what should we find in each and every incubator? But a young Emperor Solus. All of which prompts the question, were the Asians responsible for these abominations, or was it the will of the Emperor? I must know which hand guides the Empire. Though I have given up my rank, I am yet a son of Garlemald, and I will fight for the future of my homeland. It is time I return to the Hunting of Shadows. We should focus on our common foe. To reopen old quarrels now would serve no purpose. You saved my brother's life, so I'm willing to let sleeping dogs lie. But in truth, it's not my decision to make. There was a time when I scorned those who placed their faith in false gods. Even as I, in my blinkered conviction, placed mine in Asian promises. Unlike yours, my strength of will and my restraint was found wanting. We shall meet again, warrior of light. So that was the infamous Black Wolf, an unexpected ally to say the least.
I am content to leave the fine-tuning of the barrier to cleverer minds. Let us bid our friends from the Ironworks farewell, and see what can be done for Alphano back in Dorma. Our supplies at Black Rose have been ruined, but the new plant is already under construction. We should have the first batch ready in time for the offensive, Your Radiance. See that you do.
Ah, yes, the infamous Black Rose. If I recall correctly, Gaius did not much care for the invention. A ruthless and indiscriminate weapon indeed, this airborne poison. It seems you are capable of making decisions worthy of your bloodline. With no gift for sorcery, we Garlians must look to Magitek to even the odds. If it spares the needless deaths of our soldiers and serves the cause of this empire, there is no method I would not employ. How very noble of you. Truly, though, I must commend you for embracing your role as Emperor. You play the part of the determined ruler... well. Sometimes even I catch myself believing. A silent agent of death. Now that I think on it, Black Rose may well possess the perfect aspect. Slowly but surely, the deluge of light has worked upon the ether here in the source, and the gas should be most susceptible to its influence. Well, I shall leave you to your own devices. Go forth and bloody the land with your grand and glorious war. While you do what, precisely? Need you ask? I will be doing what all Asians do. I am well aware that your kind exists only to usher in the next calamity. But you seem oblivious to the harm your singular agenda causes to the Empire. I cannot have forgotten the events which followed your mortal demise. Our homeland was plunged into a civil war for your failure to name a successor. The edifice you so carefully constructed was but a hair's breadth from collapse. Are you truly so naive? You thought me oblivious to the consequences of a departure so painstakingly timed? It was by design? Well, of course it was. Though I will admit the resulting panic exceeded even my wildest expectations. But how can you be surprised? Throwing the world into disarray was the very purpose for which this nation was, as you say, so carefully constructed. Now, if you have no further questions, I must be on my way. Since we may not meet again in this lifetime, it would be remiss of me not to offer a word or two of gratitude. I really must thank you for this surplus of vessels. I can mold any host into my own image, but having bodies tailor-made for me in this fashion is so much less tiresome. 
You dabbled in elegant cloning techniques, yes? It certainly is a compelling, not to mention entertaining, field of research. And of all the options available, you chose the Founding Father on whom to experiment. You have a twisted streak to you, Varus. Like grandsire, like grandson. Hey? If events play out as planned, this will become something of a family enterprise. You will be the capstone of this world, I the anchor and shard, and together we will give the lie to this star's fraudulent existence.
Welcome back, you two. Greetings, Lord Hien. Glad you could join us. Glad to be here. I would have come sooner, were our own defense is not in question, but I am pleased to report that our soldiers are assembling for deployment to Alamigo as we speak. We're grateful for your support. Thanks to the efforts of our allies, it won't be long before we've established defensive positions on this front as well. have some good news too. Alphano has come back to us. As for the bad news... So, Alphano won't wake up, Gaius van Baelsar is alive and hunting Assians, and the Empire is planning to poison us all with toxic gas. Does that sound about right? Ordinarily, any one of those things would have left me in shock. But the way things have been lately, it's all starting to seem pretty normal. Getting back to your report, are we sure this Black Rose is the weapon Maxima was talking about? It fits the description. And it seems we have Alfino to thank for sparing us an early demonstration of its effectiveness. I have a feeling this won't be the last time his bravery in the Empire will serve us here in Eorzea. The threat of an unknown weapon has had us all on edge. But now that we know what we're dealing with, we can take steps to defend against it. As for Gaius, I'm not sure what to think. Am I happy he's alive? Not in the slightest. Am I happy he's hunting Assians? Aye. I'd have to say I am. Oh, speaking of Garlians you didn't expect to see, we have a tale of our own, as it happens. When we sent envoys to the Imperial Army to request talks, they returned with the message that Varis Zos Galvus would be attending. The Emperor himself? Well, Varus did sanction the Popularis peace mission. But knowing that an Assian walks in his son's skin, I do not see how we can trust him or anyone from that nest of vipers. The Alliance would proceed with negotiations regardless, if only to give ourselves more time to prepare. We do, however, require your cooperation. Ah, uh, right. Yes. So, as a condition for the talks to go forward, the Empire has requested that a member of the Scions be present. There'll be a representative from each Alliance nation, of course, but I'm afraid we have to ask that you come along too. God, Lise! You know how much I hate politics! But then... What choice do I have? Alphano and the others aren't going to do it. Very well. I shall attend as the Scion's representative. In case you're wondering why I didn't ask you, the Empire also requested the presence of Eorzea's champion. That's settled then. 
We don't know what Varus means to bring to the table, or why he wants you there, but having you close at hand will make all the difference. The meeting will take place on the border. Anticipating an early assault, we mean to position the bulk of our forces nearby. The Alliance leaders should already be on their way. Once you're ready, we can head out and join them. Esteemed representatives of the Eorzean Alliance. On behalf of the Galian Empire, I thank you for inviting me here today. As this parley was convened at your request, I invite you to speak first. Very well, your radiance. I, Nanimo Ulnamo, 17th in the line of Ul, should be pleased to oblige you. As recent events in Alamigo and Doma have made plain, the subjugation and exploitation of neighboring nations is not a sustainable policy. Should this day end in war, you may very well defeat us, but you will never extinguish the people's desire for freedom. Though it may not be in our lifetime, there will be another revolution, another war, and the cycle will continue. Doma has entered into a concord with the nations of Eorzea, a partnership wherein we recognize one another as equals. Garlemald could be afforded similar treatment. You need only set aside your ambitions and join us in paving a path towards peace. <laughs> you will not win me over with sophistry, Your Grace. As you know only too well, this alliance lacks the strength to keep the peace within its own borders. Even now, your struggles with the Beastmen continue unabated. Divided, you sow this fertile soil with the seeds of your differences and reap naught but discord and chaos for your trouble. Eorzea must be united under one leader, one purpose. All due respect, your radiance. The only thing that you offered the people of Alamigo was fear and hopelessness. The citizens of Dorma can also attest to the meager arms of imperial rule. There is no purpose to be found in a life of oppression, each day more uncertain than the last. Our people are willing to die for their freedom. A great many already have, and countless more will, if we don't put an end to this madness here and now. We brought order and stability to your lives. This madness and bloodshed is of your own making. You broke the peace, not Garlemald. Peace? Order? You kill our peoples, despoil our lands, take everything that is ours. And what? You expect us to lick the boot that grinds our faces into the dirt?
I expect you to weigh the costs. To recognize that countless lives have been lost on both sides in pursuit of a greater good, and to not squander all we have achieved in a fit of petulance. Your Radiance. I fear I can personally attest to the dangers of pursuing one's vision with such righteous fervor. For a thousand years, the Holy See of Ishgard waged war with dragons. A thousand years of sacrifice, of sorrow and hate, in which we bathed in the blood of friend and foe alike. Had it gone on any longer, we may well have drowned. Yet we have chosen to raise ourselves out of this bloody spiral, and have since made peace with our former enemy. So I understand. No doubt the dragons were more receptive to your overtures in the wake of their leader's demise. You speak of peace, yet use war to achieve it. Your father would not have bothered to obscure his intent with honeyed words. He understood that strength is all that matters in the end. Without his clarity of vision, I can but wonder what will become of Ishgard and her people. There was a time when Galamal too lacked a leader of conviction. Weak and unable to wield magic, we were at the mercy of the strong from whom we sought refuge in the bitter cold of the north. Were it not for the discovery of Ceruleum and the subsequent development of Magitech, we might never have gained the power to take back that which was rightfully ours. You speak as if your people were the first to have been driven from their homes. Limsa Laminsa was built by wayward souls in search of a place to call their own. On the shores of Vilbrand we found it, and from those humble beginnings did we grow and flourish, and all without robbing our neighbors of their liberty. So saith the pirate. Am I to believe that you simply asked the kobolds to yield up their lands and that they were happy to oblige you? That you did not drive them out like rats in the hold of one of the many ships seized by your privateers? I will concede that after centuries of exile, reclamation may be mistaken for invasion. Nevertheless, it is not. And those who till stolen soil have no right to object when cast out in turn. Your uncompromising nature rivals that of the Ixil. They too lament circumstances which they themselves perpetuate. Were they but to embrace peace, we would welcome them with open arms. Indeed, some few have done just that and now receive of the Twelve's Woods bounty. Would that your people might learn from their example. <laughs> you dare compare us to the Birdmen? You who thought to invoke the Twelve and threaten all of creation? I came here in the hope of finding some speck of common ground, but I see now these discussions will accomplish nothing. Despite what you people may believe, I am not wont to choose the sword over the olive branch. Tis but a pity men are loath to accept one without first being shown the other. Wait! I beg you! 
This meeting was supposed to be a chance to find a way forward together, not to bemoan the missteps which brought us here. Please, if you truly consider violence a last resort, there must be a way we can come to an agreement. As Mistress Alizé says, we did not come here to bicker over the past, but to discuss how we might strive towards a brighter future. Emperor Varys, may I suggest a short recess, that all present might compose themselves prior to beginning anew? Very well. I pray this intermission will suffice to move these talks in a more constructive direction. Now then, who would have the floor? Before we resume, I wish to offer you an apology. After you graciously accepted our invitation to discuss an armistice, we have done naught but rebuke you at every opportunity. I believe I speak for all of us when I say we are deeply sorry for our discourtesy. I'll admit your familiarity with our affair surprised me, and served to remind me how little I know of yours. 
I think all here can understand the desire to reclaim one's homeland. But why expand further? That is my question. If I may, the answer can be found in the Imperial Doctrine they took great pains to impart to my people. Recognizing the threat icons posed the world, Solus Zos Galvus decreed that they were to be eradicated. To this end, he began a campaign to unite all lands under the Garlean banner. Or so we were taught. Yet the Emperor only reached the burn, the Baron said to have been laid waste by icons, after conquering all the lands that lay between. What is more, I am quite certain the practice of summoning was not nearly so widespread in the days before the Empire's founding. When you put it like that, it all starts to sound like an excuse, doesn't it? But to distract from what? Why are you really waging this war? Finally, you ask the right question. I can but hope you heed mine answer and at last accept the righteousness of our cause. My goal is this. To return the world to the way it once was. The way it was always meant to be. In doing so, mankind will be made whole once more. No longer will we suffer from the dissension born of our differences. There will be but one race, a perfect race, as we were when time began. What in Rulga's name are you talking about? I am talking about the origins of this star, of the source and its thirteen reflections. At the instant of the great sundering, t'was not only the world that was shattered, but mankind itself. Thus were we divided into myriad races, each with its own unique imperfections. That is why man looks upon his neighbor and feels fear and hatred, why he wages war, why he kills his brother. You all in your own way have proven as much today. The peace you seek is but a fleeting solution to a fundamental problem. One which calls for more drastic measures. To bring about everlasting peace, our worlds must be rejoined. That is the goal the Empire would see realized. The glorious future unto which we shall one day shepherd mankind. A rejoining of worlds. I have heard this tale of the Source and its reflections before. Are these not the self-same desires as the Asians? Emperor Varys, do not trust in their words. They will lead you to your doom. My father thought to use them, but in the end he succumbed to their temptations. He embraced summoning like so many other pawns before him. Do not tell us you mean to do the same. <laughs> to be a pawn, free from the burden of choice, would be a blessing. But I forswore that privilege the day I learned that the Galian Empire was built by the hand of an Asian. What? Yes. My grandsire, the former emperor, is of their number. 
And who better to build an empire capable of bringing about the calamitous change we desire? Would you condemn me for this alliance? For bowing to the will of these shadowy masters when the prize is true and lasting peace? I come not to conquer, but to liberate, to free man from the prison of divergence. Imagine a world united, one perfect race beneath a single standard. An army before whose might these servants of darkness and light would fly as leaves in a storm, never again to meddle in man's affairs. We would be the masters of our own fate. I bid you join me, not as subjects of Garamald, but of a new nation. And together we shall win freedom for ourselves and generations yet unborn. You want to trigger another half dozen calamities? You can't be serious! Have you forgotten how many died? There will be no one left! Do you truly imagine we would aid you in your bloodletting? It is unthinkable! Unconscionable! And what is the alternative? To be as cattle waiting for slaughter? I would have us work together that we might take fate into our own hands! Into your hands, perhaps? But what of the other worlds, your Radiance? With every calamity, you obliterate a star and every soul that dwells on it. the Asians, we are all but tiny, momentary specks within an indifferent universe. We cannot hope to oppose them until we have been made whole once more. Are these truly the words of Garlemald's ruler? The flaws and foibles which you so abhor are what make us who we are. Every nation, even yours, Emperor Varys, is made whole through the combination of these imperfections, the strengths of one compensating for the weaknesses of another. While it is true that man succumbs all too often to anger and avarice, he may yet overcome his baser instincts through the forming of bonds with others, fostering community and cooperation. That the protector of an empire should not only reject these fundamental truths, but seek to change them at so dear a cost to life is indefensible. Such a man is not fit to govern. And you, warrior of light, would you refuse me as well? It would seem the Alliance is of one mind on this matter. You Eorzeans never cease to disappoint me. 
Though I suppose I have only myself to blame for expecting more from savages. This discussion is at an end. I bid you make ready for our next meeting. It will not be at the negotiating table. I'm not sure what I was expecting from our meeting with the Emperor, but it wasn't that. Still, at least we know now what he's really after. Aye, a future built on a mountain of bodies. I too want the Asians dead, but not at any cost. The last of the reinforcements from Dorma arrived not long ago. I pray it will be enough. Given the Emperor's stated goal, this is a battle we can ill afford to lose. If the Galleons come in force, we may not have much say in the matter, even with our combined strength. We knew from the first that the odds would be against us. But if there is even the slightest chance of victory, we must do everything in our power to seize it. We must seize it, full stop. Here, here. The two of you are to join an irregular unit and support the main host. I won't bother asking if you're minded to fight. After coming this far, how could I not? And for once, there's no one around to countermand me. Not that they would. Not even my brother. But we all know who really make the difference. Ready to frighten some Garleans? I wouldn't want to be on their side. Might I ask you to accompany the Dorman contingent? They are strangers here, and your presence would do much to raise their spirits. We would be honored. When our people stride out with you in their midst, I dare say the Aeorzeans will feel an ilm taller themselves. High spirits have a way of spreading. Ah, uh, what I wouldn't give to join you. But my duties as field commander will not allow it. I'll leave the front lines in your capable hands. Comrades, ready your arms. The hour of battle has come. May the crystal guide us to victory! Since the others couldn't be here, we'll have to fight twice as hard. If Alphano wakes to find the Imperials have won, I shall never hear the end of it. It's strange. I thought I would be terrified when the fighting started. I should be terrified. But with you at our side, 
I can't help feeling everything is going to be all right. So please... Don't you dare leave me alone. No matter what happens, we have to survive together.
Leave this to me.
Ready? Underestimate me!
Let us be about it!
There you are, and none the worse for wear. Indeed. I had hoped we might do more to help, but there seems to be no one left to fight. A tactical withdrawal, perhaps? We should give chase. Finish them off while we have the chance. Imagine the other surprise when they wake to find the war already won. Quickly! We must get her back to the encampment!
There have been several skirmishes along the border, but as yet neither side has delivered a decisive blow. We had long assumed that the Garleans would overwhelm us in a straight fight, but we seem to be gaining ground, albeit slowly. As to why that might be, the most likely explanation is that they have yet to commit all their forces. Still, we're winning, and our latest intelligence suggests the Emperor has retreated back to Garlemald. In light of this, we're considering launching an offensive with the aim of pushing the front line forward and giving ourselves some room to breathe. Commander! The Imperials! They've broken through our defenses to the east! What? Our scouts say their forces are being led by Lord Xenos. Lord Heon and Commander Hext have taken their troops to provide support, but we don't know how long they can hold out. So, they've been biding their time, waiting for his arrival, have they? Very well. Send word to our allies, requesting reinforcements for the front line. Should the worst come to the worst, I may need to enter the fray myself. But what of you? Do you still have the strength to fight? He may not die as such, but to see Lord Zenos fall on the battlefield would deal a heavy blow to Imperial morale. I'll see to it the men stay clear. Is it the voice again? Are you sure you're in a fit state to do this? May Ralga grant us strength. Give them hell, lad. I, for my part, will defend this place to my dying breath.
Shinobi's power. The art of my forebears. With a Garlean body? That's hardly fair. Still, he must be stopped, no matter the cost. to mark our reunion? <laughs> so be it. Equilibrium must be restored. And only your death will redress the balance.
Your mother chose her champion well. Yet, for all your strength, you will still fail.
At last, I found you. Please, there's no cause for alarm. Though, I confess, this is not where I had intended to meet. But the place of our meeting is of no consequence, like the war you wage. Win or lose, the path you walk leads only to oblivion. The better path leads you here, to me. I have need of your strength. I'm afraid such questions will have to wait. We have precious little time, and your work is not yet done. Go to the Crystal Tower. I have left something for you near its base. It will serve as a beacon of sorts. One which I pray will help you on your journey. All you need do is find it. I will take care of the rest. Soon, we will throw wide the gates. And the path to the first will be yours to walk at last. You're awake. Thank heavens. I see you recall that much, at least. In the midst of your duel, it is said you faltered and that the Crown Prince seized the opportunity to deliver a mortal blow. Yet before his blade could find its mark, he was distracted by the arrival of a second adversary who bore you away from the battlefield and into the hands of our chirurgeons. Lest you wonder, he left before you awoke. <laughs> As is his wont. Estinian never was one for emotional farewells. Though Zeno spessed it all before him, the battle clearly took its toll, for he retreated shortly after your rescue. Seeing this, the remaining Imperial forces decided discretion was the better part of valour and pulled back, allowing us to re-establish our position. We have since received word of renewed unrest in the provinces, doubtless inspired by the efforts of the Aeorzean Alliance and our Far Eastern allies. Nor does the good news end there. We have also come into possession of intelligence suggesting unrest within the Imperial Court. This would certainly explain why both the Emperor and Lord Xenos appear to have abandoned the fight. A long-awaited ray of hope in these dark times.
yet to awake, I'm afraid. But please, concentrate on your... You have carried the hopes of some half-dozen nations, and we are all eternally grateful for your efforts. But no one is with... Leave this fight to us, my friend. You have earned your rest. Ah, but before I forget... I was asked to deliver a message as soon as you awoke. A reminder that you are not alone, though many of your allies have fallen. When you are well and rested, you are to return home, where friends will be waiting for you. Now, if you will excuse me, I must return to the front. May we meet again soon, under happier circumstances. I rushed back as soon as I could. I swear, my heart nearly stopped when I heard you'd collapse like the others. What in heaven's name is going on?
Win or lose, the path you walk leads only to oblivion. Oh, well, that's helpful. And what else did he say? The better path leads to him? Hmm... <gasps> if his is the voice you've all been hearing, perhaps the others are with him! Sir Emmerich said the fighting had reached a stalemate, didn't he? But if that monster masquerade in as Xenos comes back? Thancred, Yastola, Urianje, Alphano, Alize. You're going to need all of them on your side to defeat him. And I forbid you from going to face him on your own. Do you hear me? So if you must leave, go and find the others. Bring them home. As for where to start, you said the stranger had left a beacon for you at the Crystal Tower, right? But how are you to find it, now that the tower has been sealed shut? There has to be a way. If anyone would know, it's Sid and the researchers of St. Koinak's find. Don't you worry, we'll find that beacon for you. I pray you have good reason for abandoning the front. How could I remain there while the rumor that my son is possessed by a demon spreads like a sickness here at home? I will not be made to fight for the throne a second time. But what of you? Did you not tell me you would destroy Eorzea's champion with the ease that one might swat a fly? A minor setback. He will not escape me again. Where is your grandsire? I would have words with him. How should I know? Do you hide from each other's sight as well? I imagine he's doing what all Asians do. Hmm. He must have found a way to take advantage of this turmoil. Men are not pawns to be played with, Asian. You underestimate us at your peril. This war will not be decided by you and yours. Man must choose his own fate, and I, for my part, will do all within my power to see Garlemald emerge victorious. Pray forgive the intrusion, Your Radiance, but the requested preparations are now complete. We stand ready to begin production of Black Rose upon your order.
My enemy, my friend, had I been but a step faster. Bloody savages! A pity your hunt leads you elsewhere. Not that I am surprised. May you find joy in it. Grow stronger, more savage, and savor every triumph. In the meantime, I will reclaim that which is rightfully mine.
Look how many people there are! Should we get to it then? Pick up anything that seems the least bit device-like and we'll make ourselves a pile. Well, if it isn't the hero of the hour, maybe you'll change it. Figs! Wedge! Aye, aye. Well, we could hardly say no to a call for aid from the Scions. Jesse called it the chief of some other business. So we'll be working twice as hard to make up for his not being here. Thrice as hard, even. Oh, thank you, both of you. I'm sure we'll find that beacon in no time. I'm not seeing anything out here. Do you reckon you could squeeze in there, Wedge? And get stuck halfway? No, thank you. I could try if you like. Tataru, no! We couldn't ask you to do that. Oh, I'll be fine. This receptionist is not afraid to get her hands dirty. Sorry, I, I meant to say, the scholars haven't finished their preliminary assessment of the site yet, so we're not supposed to venture too far in. Hmm, what's that you got there? Now that looks promising. Uh, isn't that the ironworks symbol? Counterfeiters? Now, now I have... You are right. What's happening? <laughs> Stay with me. Focus on my voice. Let expanse contract. Eon become instant. Wait, this must be it. The device. Oh, this is supposed to happen. Throw wide the gates that we may pass. Oh, safe journey, warrior of light. Find our friends and bring them home.
Oh, do not look at me so. You're blazed to a tyrant. There's no freedom in that. This is one battle you cannot fight. Away with with you. I must say, your spirited appearance always comes in well good peace. We did everything right. Everything that was asked of us, and still, still it came to this. Your time has not yet come. Endless dreams I awake. Something vague, yet urgent, calls me to action once more. Rare to meet someone out here who's not a peddler themselves. What brings you into the wilds this time of night? <laughs> well, if it ain't the oldest joke in the book. Me granddad, God's rest his soul, used to tell that one to the barman a kicking out time. And when, pray tell, did we last have a dark night? You rotten old drunk yet, he'd reply. Over a hundred bleeding years ago, that's when. <laughs> hmm. You got that look down to a T. I'd almost think you meant it. 
Ah, got to you, did they? Poor beggar. That explains it, then. Well, I've roads to travel and wares to sell, but you, you'd best hurry along to the town nearby. Just head east through the trees and aim for the Shining Tower. You'll find the place soon enough. It is the biggest settlement for Malms around. Go on now, friend. They'll take good care of you in the Crystarium. Dizzying heights it rises, the gleaming spire, its tip threatening to pierce the blinding canopy. There, it will all begin anew, between dark and light, the pure and the corrupt, the one true struggle. Every face in this city I know. Yours, I do not. This is the threshold of the Crystarium, stranger, and I am its gatekeeper. If you would enter, you will answer my questions. From where do you hail? Do you take me for a fool? No such place exists. Had you given me an honest answer, I would not have barred your way. We care little here for a person's place of origin. But instead, you chose concealment. And I will not suffer you to pass. That one had eaten. It must have gulped down the whole hand. Ring and all. Everything all right, Captain? Quite all right, my lord. Just a stray sin eater, and a weak one at that. I see. 
Weak or not, we should be on the lookout for more. But I see you've met my guest. I will escort him to the Crystarium myself, if you've no objections. Another of your mysterious friends, is it? I should have known. Very well. I'll inform the others your guest is to be given the run of the city. Pray forgive my less than cordial welcome. May the rest of your stay with us be a pleasant one. Come with me. I will answer whatever questions you have when we are somewhere more private. Right then, before we plunge into the where's and wherefores, let me first thank you for answering my summons. I had intended to bring you directly to my personal quarters, but I fear my aim was slightly off. That you are still able to make the crossing unharmed is a great relief. And so, we come to the question of where. The realm in which you now find yourself belongs to one of the Thirteen Reflections, or Shards. The first, to be precise, even if its inhabitants are largely oblivious to the fact. As to wherefore, having been awarded the rather grandiose title of Crystal Exarch, <laughs> I, in uh, my capacity as caretaker of the Crystarium, thought to seek the aid of you and your companions. That is a question with no simple answer, but all shall be explained in due course, I promise you. Let us begin with the glaring skies up above. Here in the first, the world has been all but consumed by primordial light. It began a century ago, by this realm's reckoning. A luminous flood swallowing everything in its path. More than nine-tenths of this star was lost. And the fortunate few who survived are hounded by abominations born of that catastrophe even now. Sin Eaters, we call them. The creature you saw earlier was one such monstrosity. It was to save the first from this menace that I learned to bridge the rift between worlds. That I might call upon the aid of the greatest of heroes. And though it meant depriving a world of its champion, I had to try. For in saving the first, you would bring salvation to the source as well. But what manner of host harangues his guests in the middle of the road? <laughs> Let us continue our talk within the Crystarium. City. The sole sanctuary for the living in a world all but resigned to oblivion. Each stone was laid with hope, 
the town itself a symbol, a monument to defiance in the face of death. No would-be hero could fail to answer its call. For who among us does not yearn for salvation? Thank you. 